The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now, 865-243-TALK. That's 243-8255. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Born to be wild. (laughs) This is Patrick Riggins, your wild child of talk radio. The rebel, if you will. Interestingly, I don't think I would be considered a rebel by the founders of this country. In fact, I'd be considered a national treasure. A patriot fighting for the freedom of all Americans. And for that matter, all humans. Because we are all born with natural human rights. And regardless of whether any particular government wants to acknowledge that fact or not, on this radio show, we do. Helping to get our message out is the 100,000 watt talk radio signal of the Southeast, 100.3 WNOX. Our massive and wide ranging signal is currently being heard in parts of five states and two time zones. But even with all of that, that's not enough. There are people needing to hear our message all around the world. And with that in mind, you can receive this broadcast live over the internet at www. Dot WNOXFM.com. You can also listen to any of our past shows archived over at our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. But if you want to listen live, and hey, you can even watch too, the website address again is WNOXFM.com. If you live out on the outer fringes of our signal area and aren't getting that web address clearly, it's to use the phonics. Whiskey, November, Oscar, X-Ray, FoxtrotMike.com. And speaking of whiskey, our show producer, Tori, is here with us in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting in the cab down there at O'Charlie's and come on over. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's going to try to make a segue, a, a liquor drinking joke. <laughs> so, so what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, when I think whiskey, I think Tory. Yeah, well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> drink responsible, drink responsible, kids. Yeah. Yes, just send it to Tory so you yes. don't have to drink it. <laughs> 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 Thank you again for listening this week. We're one of the fastest growing and most popular shows on the dial. It is the Patrick Riggins Show. This show has been breaking records for listening gro- listener growth almost, well, since it began last year. And the reason for that, of course, is you, the loyal audience of this show. You're tuning in by the thousands to hear what is rapidly becoming a scarce commodity in this country. What is that? What's well, logic and reason used to consistently define freedom and the defense of the natural rights of all humans everywhere. Not just Americans, because either these rights apply to everyone or they apply to no one, because we are all human. Thus, we are all born with rights, which we vigorously defend on this show. Unfortunately, the government, along with a complicit media, they like to work to split us all up. They are constantly trying to pit one group of humans against the other. Have you ever really stopped to think about that? We talk about, on this show, about how stupid wars are. Wars aren't fought between people. Very rarely does the population of one country want to wipe out or kill the population of another. It's the governments that do. They want to defeat the government of another country. But they don't want to put themselves at risk. Instead, they feel it's necessary to send our military men and women to go die in their places. And what for? Oh, sure, we're told it's to defend our country, defend our way of life, but it isn't. It's to teach that other government a lesson. Nothing more. That lesson usually is something along the lines of leave the companies who are doing business in that particular country and at the same time bribing our politicians here in this country. Leave those country or companies alone. And since most companies don't have their own military, it is so much more convenient to send ours to do the dirty work there. All in the name of defending our freedom. Against what, you may ask? Well, right, right now, it's against terrorists. We used to sacrifice our 
freedoms and rights in this country so we could fight communism. But at that, as that system started to collapse upon itself, we found we needed a new boogeyman to fight. You see, we always need someone or something to fight against. For the most part, we used to mind our own business in this country. But as companies expanded across the world, they found it necessary to have the American military go in and clear a path for them to do business. And if that particular country didn't want to play ball, well, then the CIA was more than happy to go in and help, quote, freedom fighters, the rebels, overthrow that oppressive regime. Never mind the replacement regime was just as oppressive. It didn't matter because they were business friendly. So what's a few thousand or a few hundred thousand dead bodies when it helps companies to do business in that country? It's all numbers back in this country anyway, back here in Washington. Even today, we're killing, quote, terrorists all around the world without trials, without an appeals process. And all we see here in the media is a uh, well, 20-something terrorists killed at a barbecue on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Sure, a lot of them were women and children and even men with nothing to do whatsoever with terrorism. They were just trying to stay alive in an unstable region of the world. Pretty much what's been going on for generations there. But someone was attending the party who looked like he could have been a terrorist or even might have been confirmed as helping to plan an attack in his country. So we killed him along with everyone else around him. Oh, well, too bad for those people. Too bad those natural human rights don't apply to them. Anyway, we're up on the first break of the Patrick Riggin Show. We have... A lot, of course. We never get to everything on this show. But join us after a couple of minutes, and we'll try our best. This is Patrick Riggins. We'll see you in a little bit. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host... Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Spinning a little three days grace for the bumper music. Not only do you get my logic and superior and consistent reasoning on this show, you get good bumper music as well. Plus, if you're watching online, you see Tori playing air guitar. Rock pose. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> Again, if you want to watch that, you can go to WNOXFM.com. Very interesting. Who wouldn't want to watch that? Who would not? Who would I would, not? I would hook up a, well, I'm showing my age. I'd hook up a VCR and tape that. VCR beta. Oh, here comes Corda. He's forgotten he something again. what George forgot. <laughs> we should have a, a segment. What did George forget? No, I think he's just... Passing through. Passing through. <laughs> anyway, it seems as if this whole gun debate is going to continue to be kicked around in Washington and personally, I think it's a little bit, a couple of reasons for this. But it is one of those polarizing issues that helps distract you from what is also happening in Washington. Don't get me wrong. We need to send a strong message to Congress, which you should already be doing. You need to be calling and emailing your representatives. Don't bother sending a letter. It has to go through all the scanning and checking procedures now in place and the congressional mailroom. So it won't arrive in a timely fashion. Now, if you want to send a letter to your representative's local office in your district, that would probably work. But calls and emails, most assuredly, going to get through much quicker. Quicker. But you should already be be bombarding them with calls and emails to let them know you want them to stand up for your right to own and use any type of far, firearm you wish. If you haven't done that, make a note to do it right after this show. It is vitally important that your representatives hear from you, their constituents. They are dang sure going to hear from the groups wanting to take away your rights to self-defense. Along those same lines, in case you've not heard, Gun Appreciation Day is this Saturday, January 19th. That is this Saturday, right, Tori? 19th? I think it is. Mm, yes. I mean, yeah, okay. I yeah, think. That, yeah that's this. Computer. Yes, that'll be yeah, it is. This coming night, Saturday. So, yeah, Saturday, January 19th. And on that day, you're encouraged to go to your local gun range and shoot or Go to your local gun store and buy something, anything. It doesn't have to be a gun. Just buy something to show your support. 
And if your local gun shop is not doing anything special, then be sure and call them this week and tell them to get on the stick and put something together. This is the chance to demonstrate to those who would like to disarm the population that, hey, maybe that's not such a good idea. If you're one of your congressional representatives is also an anti-gun person, I would suggest that you invite them to arrange for some shooting or just stop in and talk to some people there. They aren't going to do it, but you'll be putting a bug in their ear to let them know there are a lot of people out there who disagree with their particular anti-gun stance. And you'll be doing it in a nice way so as not to give them any incidents that they can point to where you know, this or that gun uh, called my office and threatened me, although they may lie and say you did that anyway. Congressional people aren't the most honest humans on the earth, and they've been known to lie before to make their point. If you want to get more information about Gun Appreciation Day, you can go to, hey, it's gunappreciationday.com. <laughs> Very easy to get to and figure out. They've got more information there. But getting back to my point about distracting you, have you noticed how government, and Washington in particular, has become one big reality show? The Democrats are fighting against the Republicans on this issue, this issue or, or that issue. Is this one group winning against the other? Does one party have an advantage? What is the president going to do? Is the House going to pass something the Senate won't, or vice versa? And the media is all breathless watching all this political theater play out. And that's what it really all is, political theater. It is something to keep you mesmerized while the government slips its hand into your pocket to steal your money, while at the same time slowly relieving you of those burdensome things called your rights. Unfortunately, too many people in this country are falling for all of this. For a good example, while this gun debating and physical cliff hysteria has been going on, the president signed into law the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Amendments Act, known as FISA, and the National Defense Authorization Act of 2013, and that's known as the NDAA. Uh, in case you're a new listener to this show and don't know what these two pieces of unconstitutional legislation do, FISA, F-I-S-A, it allows the federal government to spy on Americans who communicate with people overseas. It doesn't matter if they're working for a newspaper or whether it is family overseas or even someone with whom you do business. If the government determines you need to be monitored and the bar is pretty low to meet that standard, then they will be listening and reading your communications. FISA also allows a litany of other unconstitutional actions, one being the ability for federal agents to write their own search warrants without the prior approval of a judge. Yes, always good. One interesting aspect is these warrants, or in these warrants, is the complete secrecy involved with them. For instance, let's say a federal agent wants to see what books you've been checking out of the library. So he writes a warrant specifying he wants that information, presents it to the library, and if anyone lets you know you are the subject of that warrant, they can be fined and imprisoned. Now, this even applies to you. If they serve you individually with this particular warrant to get something, say, off your computer, you cannot talk to anyone about it. If you do, again, possible fine and prison time. Doesn't that sound constitutional to you? Now, just to decide how all you Obama supporters feel about that. Is that okay to do since it's, hey, it's your guy doing it? While we're talking about that, how about the closing of Gitmo? That didn't get done either, did it? You liberals, you're useful idiots to the government. Now, the conservatives are, too. Their guy just didn't make it into office. But here you liberals screamed and yelled about Bush violating everyone's rights, and Obama has been doing it tenfold, and yet you demand nothing from him, even triumphantly voting him back into office, and you're happy to do it. You don't really care about anybody's rights, do you? All you care about is winning. It doesn't even matter if you're screwing yourself over in the process. Hey, your guy won. You were on the winning side. You can console yourself with that as your rights are taken away, just like the conservatives are. Yeah, you hate them. Take those conservatives' rights away. Now, yours are getting taken, too, but you'll ignore that little inconvenient fact until it's too late. 
Anyway, for those of you who are interested, the other legislation I was talking about, the NDAA, that allows, among other things, the indefinite detention of American citizens without a trial, without access to a lawyer, without access to your family, nothing. Does that sound uh, like an America in which you want to live? All of this was signed into law without so much of a notice in the media. And you wonder why guns are under such scrutiny now. Let's see, the government is running roughshod over your rights. The population of this country, you know, they may decide it doesn't sound, doesn't really like that good like that idea. Well, what will you think they'll use to make changes in this government if voting doesn't seem to be doing the job? Now, am I overreacting or am I being too dramatic? That is usually what is said about people who stand up and denounce this sort of tyranny. Now, Patrick, do you really think the government is out to take away your rights to try and monitor as much as it can about everyone's life? Sure, you doubt me, but just look around at all the intrusiveness of the government. Go to the airport and enjoy the soft core porn, also known as the TSA checkpoint. But wait, you don't even have to go fly to enjoy having someone's hands run all over you. The TSA is bringing all that fun to train stations. Bus stations, even major sporting events. The government even demands to know how much money you make each year so you can be taxed on that income. Taxed on your hard work. Think about that for a minute. You work your butt off so the government can take part of your money. The government isn't helping you work. It isn't listening to your boss yell at you. You know, it isn't even um, covering for your breaks. Certainly isn't helping you with the uh, TPS reports, yeah. you know. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do yeah. that from now on, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Watch you out know. for your cornhole, bud. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the government is screwing you over. It doesn't get a it, it gets a cut, but it doesn't have to do anything for it. It just decides you owe it money. So now you do. Don't like it? Tough. Sure, we fought against the King of England for laying taxes on us, but we are supposed to just sit here and take it if our government does it. Because to say anything, well, you are just being inflammatory. Not to be confused with a show producer, Tory. <laughs> he doesn't demand a piece of your hard work. <laughs> I just ask for it. Just ask for it. If you want to send it, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> but he doesn't have a team of agents to come get it. Back to my point, it's though. you know of. Yeah, that shit I know of. They've not visited my house yet. <laughs> they will. <laughs> they are, they're coming. They're coming. But anyway, all the while, the, the, the media has been hyping this fiscal cliff and gun control debate. Nothing is said about these two pieces of legislation that was signed into law. Nothing. You're supposed to listen to what the media tells you is important and not pay attention to what Congress is quietly doing behind your back. Do you want to know? Yeah, we've, well, we're coming up on a break. But when we come back at the bottom of the show, after the bottom of the hour break, I will let you know how your Congress people voted on this NDAA. I've got a list of all the states just around in our area, and we'll run through those real quick so you can let them know you're not happy with it. <laughs> this is Patrick Riggins with the Patrick Riggins Show. We'll be back. Keep us Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Lounge. <laughs> Playing a little... Gino Vanelli coming off the Boy, bottom of the, the hour. Smooth hits. <laughs> yes. WNOX playing the smooth hits only for you. <laughs> the Silent Storm. His his name sounds a little bit like aftershave, doesn't it? <laughs> when you want to smell like a man, use Gino Vanelli. You'll love the cool sensation. She'll love the smooth and enticing scent. <laughs> Gino Vanelli for today's man. <laughs> Smell like Gino. Yeah. You, know. you could use his name to just endorse about anything. You know, I could say, like, wine. Hey, baby, it's your birthday. Let's order a bottle of Gino Vanelli to celebrate. 
Gino, you know. You know. But drink responsibly. <laughs> uh, you can even, like, a chainsaw. Yeah, my old Husqvarna was too small, so I bought one of them 32-inch Vanellis on sale, and it cut through them logs like butter. <laughs> no weight eater, my Gino Vanelli. <laughs> yeah, I was out fishing and had on my Gino Vanelli waders. Heck, <laughs> <laughs> uh, even car tires. Yeah. You know, you say... Yeah, my Porsche was getting a little loose in the corner, so I slapped four new unidirectional Gino Vanellis on there. Now it handles like it's on rails. <laughs> this is the comedy. This is the comedy portion. Yeah. Well, well whatever they, listeners Georgia didn't run off in the last show, I think we just successfully did right then. So. Yeah. That's my talent. I can take a diehard listener of a radio station and run them off quicker, you know? Yeah. The thing is, just, we can't be serious all the time, folks. No, you cannot. You have serious. to have fun in life. Otherwise, you'll end up going on a rampage. <laughs> can Gino go bye-bye now? Yeah, we can ease Gino out. You know? Bye-bye, Gino. <laughs> I don't have one of those aftershave names. You know, Patrick Riggins. Just doesn't work. <laughs> My Uncle Sam gave me a Gino Vanilli 8-track whenever I was a kid. Yeah, so really? that's Yeah. <laughs> He'd always give me his old disco 8-tracks when he was t- done listening to like Andrea True Connection, oh. Casey and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> yeah. So... So you had that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, well, I don't know. My, my name just is not soothing like his, Gino Vanelli. My name's more like, a, like an irritant. <laughs> At least the people who make their living in government. <laughs> All right. Oh, let me grab what I was going to do here off this last segment. When we were talking about uh, the uh, NDAA, I wanted to tell you real quick how your person voted. Let's see, this station reaches about, oh, about five states. So I'll run down these people just real quick. You can go to uh, votesmart.org, and this is where this information is from. But these are the people who voted for the NDAA. In Tennessee, it was Republicans Chuck Fleischman, Diane Black, Marsha Blackburn, Stephen Fincher. They voted yes, along with Democrat Jim Cooper. Now, if you're down in Georgia... Republicans Jack Kingston, Lynn Morse, Westmoreland, Tom Price, Rob Woodall, James Scott, Paul, I think it's Brown, and Phil Gingry, I guess, they voted yes. Now, Democrats on that side that voted yes were Stephen Bishop Jr., John Barrow, and David Scott. These are your House people. In North Carolina, is Republicans Renee Elmers, Virginia Fox, John Cobble, Sue Myrick, and Patrick McHenry all voted yes. Democrats George Butterfield Jr., David Price, My- Mike McIntyre, Larry Kissel, and Heath Schuler all voted yes for the NDAA. In uh, Kentucky, Republicans Ed Whitfield, Stephen Guthrie, and Hal Ro- Rogers voted yes on the Democrat side. Albert Chandler III was the sole Democrat voting yes. The other Democrat was apparently thinking that day and voted no. And in Virginia, Republicans Rob Whitman, Scott Rigel, James Forbes, Forbes, Robert Hurt, Bob Goodlatt, Eric Cantor, and Frank Wolf all voted to ignore the Constitution. The Virginia Democrats also voting for this were Bobby Scott, Jim Moran, and Jerry Connolly. Now, in the Senate, which had also cleared the Senate, in Tennessee, both Republicans, Lamar Alexander and Bob Corker, both voted yes. In Georgia, both Republicans, Saxby Chambliss and Johnny Isaacson, voted yes. In North Carolina, both the Republican Richard Burr and Democrat Kay Hagan voted yes. In Kentucky, Republican Mitch McConnell voted yes. And Republican Ron Paul voted no, making his father happy. And in Virginia, both Democrats, Mark Warner and Jim Webb Jr., all voted yes for the NDAA. Something you might want to think about come election time that obviously these people do not care much for the Constitution. Anyway, getting on. (laughs) Uh, This segment, I've talked about hit on this on previous shows but i've never really devoted a segment to it and incidentally if you want to hear any of those past shows you can go to our youtube channel at youtube.com forward slash patrick reagan show there you have all the past shows conveniently with all the commercials and lead-in music edited out so no gino vanelli when you're listening to this 
But you get the meat of the shows, the whole grain goodness. It tastes good and is good for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> like Gino Vanelli. <laughs> yeah, like Gino Vanelli, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to have a bottle of that. A bottle of a Gino Vanelli 62. <laughs> everybody's at home that's right? enough of the Gino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody's going, okay, we got it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, uh, voters are frustrated. And politicians are playing off that. They're playing the people frustrated with shootings. They're they're playing them for gun control. They're playing the people who don't have a job or have one in which they don't make enough money, which is just about any job. It's pretty rare that someone working will tell you they're making too much money. So the politicians are playing everyone off each other in order to manipulate the country into doing what the government wants. And, of course, the media are all right there helping along. Um, Why do people blame the so-called rich for their problems? Because people don't want to take the blame for their situation in life. It isn't their fault. It's someone else's. If you accept blame for something in your life, you would also have to accept it's no one's fault but your own for why you, where you are in life. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to look at themselves as failures. The problem is no one is a failure. All you have are people who have tried and didn't succeed, but then didn't want to try again. Those people could be, and a lot of times are, only one more try away from success. There's not anyone with a semi-sound mind in any housing project or rundown ghetto that hasn't tried something to make money. Legitimate money, we'll say that. <laughs> Things might not have worked out the first time. Now they're not going to try again. Things in your life may not be your fault, but it is up to you to fix it. And most people don't want to do that because they don't have to. They'll still eat. They'll have a place to sleep. In fact, with government giveaways, you can survive pretty well, comparatively speaking. The problem with letting government do anything, whether it be health care or school vouchers or political or political public transportation, whatever it is, the government has to pick winners and losers, and it shouldn't be doing that. All these people railing against profit, and yet... They're the beneficiaries of profit. Anything you didn't personally make, these things are provided by a profit. Politics has become like, a, like sports teams. I'm on the Democrats' team. Well, I'm on the Republicans' team. Well, I'm on the environmental team. Well, I'm on the gun control team. All these things are bad. Unlike sports teams, winning or losing elections puts our country at stake, depending on who is working in Washington. Whether this party is having a winning season or a losing season whether they are calling bad plays, sure, you'll complain about them, but you always back them, no matter what. You need to start thinking about America as a team, not a collection of a bunch of little teams. All these politicians and special interest groups, what they're doing is dividing our country up so they can rule over their particular little segment of people. It's much easier to manipulate a small group of people, supposedly united behind some common cause, than it is to manipulate a large number of these same people. I represent women voters. Well, I represent black voters. Well, I represent Hispanic voters. Who cares? Stop letting these little weasels in government start fights between all of us. The reason they get these voters divided up into these partisan issue centric voting blocks is so they can get their stuff passed more easily. It's just like complaints that arise every election. The politicians are only paying attention to certain states, certain areas, because if they can just win those areas, then they'll win the elections. It's the same thing with voters. If I can deliver my block of voters to a politician, I gain more power, and so do the people who stick with me. And by focusing on just one issue or a narrow part of an agenda, I can get people to support me more fervently. Anyway, we have just blown through that segment. <laughs> we are already up on the last segment of the Patrick Riggins Show. This show just flies by. You blink your eyes, you miss it. So... Take the break to blink your eyes. But keep your ears open because these guys sponsoring us are the ones that keep this show on the air. This is Patrick Riggins along with Tori spinning the tunes. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. 
Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Everybody wants to rule the world. So, I don't. No, I don't either. I don't know what the obsession is with that. I want a little chunk of it, but I <laughs> yeah. not all of it. Well, you won't rule your part of the world. Let someone else rule theirs and, and stop worrying about just what my, everybody else is doing. Just my one little acre in Seymour. Two acres. Yeah. <laughs> and you're set. I'm set. <laughs> Government, leave me alone. Now, see, I would talk I'm to your groovy. wife, and she would might dispute the fact who's the ruler out there on that. Yeah, well, we'll not go stuff. there. Because <laughs> you got to go home. <laughs> and I don't want a phone call from her. <laughs> Stop putting those ideas in his head. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, not only can I run off listeners, I can ruin relationships, too. <laughs> I can multitask. <laughs> this whole day has been a mess. <laughs> Because it's nice outside and everybody's listening. happy. Everybody's been listening since eleven this morning. You know it's, <laughs> it's been crazy <laughs> at the radio been a show, mess, yeah. yeah, or station. There's, there's just one common factor in all that is me. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a thread that runs through every show, and I believe its name is Tory. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are inflammatory. <laughs> uh, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Or you could also be contributory. <laughs> Not the exact pronunciation of that word, but... Or I can be inventoried. <laughs> inventory. Or factory. <laughs> or factory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You can just hear him tuning over to the rock station. <laughs> anyway, I want to kind of pick up a little bit on what we were talking about when we left. And that's just this splitting up of America into groups. Let's look at it from a government's point of view. They don't have to, when you're running for an office, especially like president or something like that, they, they don't have to campaign in states that don't have a high electoral count or a state that their particular party has all wrapped up. They only have to concentrate on those states that are so-called in play, those states that could go either way. The safe states, uh, those states that I've won merely by belonging to the party I do, I may make one or two trips to them, but I don't really have to listen to them. They'll blindly vote for the party that has the state all locked up. That's the same thing with these interest groups. All I need to do is pull together the congressional representatives that are pressured by certain key groups, and I can get my legislation passed. It doesn't really matter if I get some opposition. There aren't enough votes to stop the passage, no matter who is in the majority. If I can get these key groups on my side, I've got my bill all taken care of. You know, why do you think lobbyists only concentrate on certain politicians? Same reason, getting those swing votes locked up, those solid votes, well, we don't have to worry about those. All they need are a certain number of swing votes, and then they're all set. In case you're wondering what a swing vote is, it's someone who doesn't vote their principles. Otherwise, they wouldn't be a swing vote. They wouldn't be able to be bought off or pressured or bullied into voting a certain way. Same thing with swing voters. They sell their vote to the highest bidder. You know, we should just do something like a website, like the political machines of the past. Just go ahead and pay off people to vote a certain way. You could list a politician, determine how many votes that needed to be cast for them to win, and then just start the bidding, Uh, like eBay for elections. Because that's what essentially is happening with about 50% of the people voting. They'll only vote for someone who is promising them something, promising to take money from one American citizen and give it to them. You know, let's just remove all the fluff and get down to buying votes. That's what it seems to be coming to in this country. Speaking of which, (laughs) real quick, I was talking on a previous show how there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats. In fact, I think I talk about that a lot. I think I talk about it on this show, even, this today. But anyway, I received an email from a congressional representative's office stating that there is a huge difference between this person's political party and the other one. Let's say this person, well, I don't know, let's say is a Republican merely for illustration purposes. I'm not saying that someone from the office of a, Rep- a Republican politician emailed me. It could have been a Democrat's office. I'm just saying Republican for the purposes of this story. But I received this email and had just had to laugh after bullet point after bullet point reiterated the 
spending differences between the two parties. Now, this email is literally about a page long. They've included some footnotes and links to pages on the Internet. When I replied, this is exactly what I said, and I printed it out so I knew my audience. I knew they'd like to hear about it. But what I, what I wrote was, Dear Mr. Smith, well, Mr. Smith being the generic name of this person who wrote me, <laughs> Dear Mr. Smith, the difference between stealing $50 and stealing $100 from taxpayers is only a matter of degree. You are still guilty of theft either way. Thank you for listening to the show, and I look forward to more correspondence from your office. Sincerely, Patrick Riggins. <laughs> so, well, I really don't think I'll be getting anything more from them, <laughs> but it will be interesting to see if I do. <laughs> I, I hate it to reply to a page-long, footnoted, and hyperlinked email with four lines of text, but, hey, I don't feel the need to elaborate on the point. I thought it was pretty simple and straightforward. If you're stealing, it is wrong, no matter whether it's a, a little or a lot. I don't think any of the politicians at any level of government understand that at all. And really, why should they? Our, our citizens don't understand it either. A large percentage is perfectly happy to take money confiscated from their fellow citizens. In fact, most people receiving government handouts will justify it by saying they actually deserve it in some way. If you're a regular listener to this radio show, you know I advocate for getting yourself freed from the bonds of, of the government dole. Even if it means you have to suffer some short-term pain, in the long run, you'll be so much better off depending on yourself instead of government. Now, you may ask, now, why is that? Because government's going to fail it cannot continue spending more money than it takes in. It's simple math. Government is a creation, and thus it can disappear. We can't. We are humans. We'll still be here long after government is gone, when it has run out of money. It dies. When humans run out of money, we just start providing for ourselves and continue to live on. Heck, we'll even find out, uh, we'll even help out our fellow humans by, to survive by, we'll share food and water, or whatever, with those who cannot help themselves. Not the lazy, not those wanting to live off the work of others, but those people who absolutely cannot do for themselves. Because we're Americans, that's what we do. Anyway, we're up on the end of the shoe here, the Patrick Riggins show, an interesting show. Would you not say, Tori? <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, he's he's just enraptured <laughs> as, he, as he texts on his phone. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I'll call you out. They can see you on the webcam. <laughs> so anyway, if you want more information about the show, you can go to Facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. Are we up on a minute yet, Tori? We got one minute exactly. All righty. So we'll wrap this up then. You can go to Facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. If you need to know how to spell Riggins, it's R-I-G-G-I-N-S, Patrick Riggins Show all together. You can also go to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you can get us the old-fashioned way. Just send us a card or letter to WNOX here on Kingston Pike in Knoxville. Join me next Sunday afternoon where, once again, we'll talk about Gino Vanelli. <laughs> Freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. This is Patrick Riggins, and we'll see you next Sunday afternoon. Have a great week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on The Patrick Riggins Show. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. Be there.